Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Horrible Decisions. My name is Wheezy. This is your girl, Mandy. And we have a guest in the studio whose name I'm going to get right because it is... This is so much pressure, and it's so easy. <laughs> Michelle. Michelle, yeah. Michelle is in the studio today because I was a little inspired to have all of us, not just men, but women as well, have a lot more respect for mamas. I tweeted that I was on Bleecker Street going up the subway steps, and this girl was carrying her baby up the stairs, and when I offered to help her, she said, I got it, sis. These men can watch me do it by myself. She was really pissed off because it was a long way up, and uh, for those of you that live in New York or have seen in the news, there was a woman who died recently midtown after like a stroller fell on top of her. her she was carrying her child. Child lived, but she didn't. So I want us to all finish this hour up with a lot more respect for women, helping out moms in the street with strollers, whatever we got to do, our sisters, our moms, our girlfriends, baby mamas, all of them. So let's get it started. How much blood comes out? A lot. Okay. <laughs> that um, well, I was just kidding. Actually, let's start with let's 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 really need to. Let's, okay. <laughs> you don't want to start with the blood. We're gonna start slow. You don't Maybe want the nasty you, stuff. You, you, know, take our like you don't want the nasty stuff yet. Okay. <laughs> well, we gonna get nasty easy. stuff. I'll but take it easy. Listen, this is how we all got here. Technically, we need this episode. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's start with kink of the week, though. All right. So, guys, we are going to start with our kink of the week. As you know, every week. We bring you guys a kink, let you know the paraphilia and the kind of medical term of that. Um, and so this week it is Zumi Tophilia or Thophilia, I don't know. So Zumi Tophilia, it is another more modern fetish incarnation. I really was going to say that different. What? I was going to say Zumithophilia. Oh, mm. I did say Zumi. <laughs> that is probably not right. It probably is Zumi, though. You're right, bitch. That's real elementary. Zumi, Sophilia. <laughs> okay. Now that you said Zumi, though, okay, bitch. I'm My shit was real it. childish. Zumi. <laughs> You're right. Okay, bitch. It's Zumi, though. There we go. I like Zumi, though. Zumi, though. It could be myth. It could be myth, though. Okay, bitch. It ain't Zumi. you right. <laughs> Another more modern fetish incarnation. Zumithophobia describes the act of being turned on by the thought of having sex with mythical creatures and animals. These would be such as trolls, werewolves, dragons, and mermen, or mermaids, um, and no mythical creature stays sac- sacrosanct. See why you got to add words nah, I, add I don't it. know what that word is. But what I do know is I totally get the dragon thing because after watching Game of Thrones... You, you know want to fuck... Wait, what is... You want to fuck dragons? Not they really. like lizards. You got iguanas living in Florida, bitch. I mean, I don't want to fuck you a dragon. Fuck some I'm just alligators. Like, we from get Florida. The, I'm just saying, I get it. <laughs> That's kind of bestiality, bro. Of I all, did not say of I all mythical creatures, she goes Yo, to the dragon. dragon. Mark this clip because yeah. I come over. No, she went straight to the dragon. She went straight to the dragon. My because shit. I went straight to Twilight, bitch, with the goddamn. Werewolf, yeah. like before they the turned werewolves. into the werewolf. Yeah. Wait, now I'm saying dogs. Oh. So not werewolves. <laughs> uh, what would I fuck? What mythical creature I want to fuck? So you know what? And I don't know if this is bestiality too, though. Like the half man, half horse, because that dick gonna be big. <laughs> what is that What's it called? <laughs> A mega, mega, metatar. Senator, centaur. Mental no, that ain't no centaur. Yo, if you're listening to this right now and you know what it is, scream it into your headphones. It's a med. It's a metatar. Well, that's what Nigga, I would want to fuck. You, got, you ain't even got I, our goddamn I have, You know what is this? Yeah, what is yeah. this up here? You see, when we had the next and nigga. And it was white people, okay? nigga. When Eddie was here, the nigga had notes. He had it ready. Oh, yeah, we gonna look. Mm. Don't be, don't. Niggas, every time. Don't just be taking the job. Out. Not that serious. Centaur. Centaur. Look, see, she was right. She said centaur. That's because I fucked a lot of geeks. Is, so I feel like if it, <laughs> but so the problem is I've never seen a black man, so it would have to be half black man, half horse. Type in black and, centaur. And, Wait, yeah, he got dreads on Google. Oh, he got dreads? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll fuck him. Hold on, look, why are you looking up? Don't look up black horse. Maybe African American centaur. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Nah, oh, nah. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, no. Nah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, <laughs> not that one, bro. I don't no, want that one. not a good image. Okay, so. The second. What, wait, wait, left. wait. What mythical creature? Let, let's get off the animals. What other oh. mythical creature would you fuck? Mm. Like a wizard? Oh, I'll fuck Aladdin. I'll fuck Will Smith. That don't count, bro. <laughs> That's, oh, like a genie. Okay, a genie is a mythical creature. What a about genie. you? 
I'll fuck a genie um, for money. I'll be like, let me get him one Why more everything got to be for money? Just say you want to see. See what I'm talking about? Because I'm saying, one of my wishes is going to be money. I'll say it's I'll be like, let me get one more. If you get a wish, you ain't got to fuck him for the money. You just wish well, I'm going to fuck him for one more. You get um, three, right? You get three wishes. I'll yes. Let me see. <laughs> what about a troll? Nah. What's a troll? That's creepy. Google a troll. Trolls are ugly. Trolls are like midgets. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. I know you be coming for me, but bitch, Little they call people. me midgets all. The, they call me a midget, nah, so look I feel at like that it's face. okay. Uh-uh. Oh yeah, no, nah, <laughs> I ain't fucking. I'm midget. good. There's a hilarious joke that I think it's um, John Mulaney tells. He's like, when I was doing TV, I had this bit, or someone said it about midget, and they were like, you can't say that. It's like saying the N word. And he's like, you know how I know it's not the N word because you just said midget. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. I mean, Facts. it's bad. Facts. I'm trying to. I'm Allie, really trying Allie to. Allie wanted me to bleep that shit out. Look at that troll. See, nah, I ain't uh-uh. fucking no troll. Oh wow, that's bad. But how much money would you fucking for? Mm. Why we always got to bring up the money, bro? So how? So how much money? How much money would I need to fucking midget? Basically, Maybe. with an ugly face. A little that's what okay, a little person with an ugly face. So an ugly midget. How much money? How much money would you do? Like the head? Wait, no, the head regular size. I would man. fuck a little person just if they're attractive for cheap. No, but they have to look like a troll. That's no, what that's what I'm saying. Okay. They have to look like a troll. We talking about mythical creatures, bitch. I don't know. I mean, it's not like I'm doing something crazy. So how much like, money? You said you would get shitted on for what? 20 bands? 10 bands? You went down. You, I you went all the way down. I did not say that. I said if it was a hard <laughs> shit. I didn't say 20. I said 50. Okay, so how much you fucking a troll for? I want to say higher now. Because, I mean, if y'all know I would get shit. It, wait, I just want to preface this by saying, if you never heard the shit episode, <laughs> I started at like a quarter mil. But did I work my way down? <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to go with like 75. I, you lying like hell, bitch. That pr- image we're looking at right now. <laughs> I, that? Yeah. I'd have to do that. You're 75, right. bro. You're 75, right. definitely. 75, I'd rather fuck a Republican yeah. for cheaper. Okay, I can dig it. I can dig it. That face is... All right. What is another myth? Hold on, where was on there? I, I, troll. Werewolves, dragons. I didn't want to... merman real quick. That might be hot. Duh, that's like that's Ariel, like, bitch. Yeah. Gonna, he gonna be wet. It's like Ariel. Merman. merman. Oh, yeah, oh, he's fine. Nice. But yeah. he ain't got no dick. How you gonna eat? Yeah. We gonna scissor. No. Oh, that's exactly what y'all doing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's real gross? It would be like if you put a goldfish mm. to play with your pussy, your clit. Look at this guy. <laughs> Look at this guy. Nah. Oh, that's the black merman? Wait, 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 that's what you pull up? Right here. Wait, another oh, one. No. This nigga. <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, if, if you're a patron, we're going to definitely ask y'all with, which mythical creatures y'all want to fuck, but we're going to put some pictures up of um, these black merman. So when mm. I, Jeeves and I were first dating, I thought that, like, he, he really freaked me out. He sent me, he had, like, a Tumblr thing of, like, um, not anime, but it was more so, like, fawns and, like, they had pointy ears and shit. And he That's was, a mythical creature. Bro. Yeah, he was like, you think this is hot? And I was like, I could see it. So I'm not gonna I'm lie. I'm looking at her tits. I used to like, um, what was it called? Neverland, um, the Peter Pan movie. Mm-hmm. I lo- they looked so cute. Yes, <laughs> when they got them little ears in that movie. But like, how cute? I mean, I was young watching the movie, so I got turned. This is when like, I actually. Like, edge, well, no, at this, at this point, I like. I thought I liked white guys. This is when I was like into NSYNC, Backstreet Boys. So when I watched Neverland, I was into the little white actors. Now, nah, <laughs> bruh. Okay. I mean. I'd rather fuck him than the troll. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, 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 that's definitely, definitely that. a scissoring situation. I'm, I'm, yeah. I mean, honestly, it's like paraplegic, like dudes that can't feel their dick. Remember when we were talking about, was it? No, maybe you weren't here. When Ashley was here, the girl who was in a wheelchair, and we were talking about like people that could jerk you off and shit. Like, I mean, we could have figure out a way to fuck. <laughs> he definitely fingering you with them fins. I'll take it. It might be slimy and weight. slapping you like. <laughs> oh, it's slapping you. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so I do want to say, if you guys have not checked us out, we were again. We mentioned this before on the cover of Salty. If you guys have not, go to at Salty World on Instagram. Click the link in their bio and subscribe to read our interview with them, and then just a ton of stories. Yo, so their newsletters. Dope. They I have just got really dope stuff. Yesterday or maybe this morning, it said how to talk. A straight dude into pegging not saying that you have to but um what i did was i i was looking for a news article today and i was like okay well let me just look on salty and they had a motherhood section yeah um so i i got i know it's a long one but i got the brunt of what i really found interesting i'm but, so glad so we don't have to listen to you read it 
bitch. <laughs> so it's okay, called. Okay, let's get a summary. The headline, and I want to ask this because Mich- Michelle has uh, kids. Oh, you have. You do have kids now. I have two. Oh, girl, and you And she's active. pregant, by the way. Nice you act. I'm pregnant now. Okay. Why you should buy a sex toy for your teen, Ooh. okay? Mm. What if we taught our children from the beginning to not seek out relief of those sexual desires in other people, but teach them something that they can relieve themselves? Studies have shown that kids that are educated about masturbation and do it more confident with their own bodies and sexuality are... Fuck, man. I didn't want to mess it up, See, but I did. you already did. It's depression. It's the fucking fresh. <laughs> what is it? It's the fresh. I don't know. Depression. It's no the fresh. It's oh, like oh, the tens fresh. of thousands of people are going to listen to me say a word wrong. Opposed to like when I'm just like improv and I just said zoomy. Yeah, but like that was a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> like I almost said some run- random shit. It's just because I, I, I know. I don't want to. Okay, so it's funny that you brought this article up, though, because if you guys came to our DC live show, oh, yeah, that's we right. brought up masturbating um, as teens and if parents should punish their children if they caught them masturbating or no, if, we no, 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 no. We, if we should the encourage them. The right? vanilla shit in DC was a woman wanting to teach masturbation for ages eight to thirteen, yeah, and then our audience started. The audience talking. was starting. Um, yeah. They would. They said they. Most of them said they wouldn't punish. I think all of them said they wouldn't punish. But the headline for this shit is like normalizing sexuality in subtle ways. Picking a toy for them can be awkward, but they're basically saying you pick it and keep the conversation going. And they're saying like instead of, um, you know, it says imagine a kid Billy who wanted to experiment with harmless ass play. If he had a small plug to use on himself, he could have avoided that ER trip with a Sharpie stuck in his butt. Okay, so here's here's my thing, and, and I think this is why I even said um, there was there was a, a slight argument and people not wanting to explore this. I shared a story about a friend of mine who caught her younger daughter, her daughter's 13 or 14, reading um, erotic novels. And she <laughs> went immediately... Me to take away her laptop, take away her phone, and like, oh my God, you should not be reading this. Mm -hmm. And instead of having that sex conversation to where if she's being aroused this way, she blocks it out. This is an opening to where you guys can have the conversation, whether she's masturbating to it, whether, you know, this is what's arousing her. At least she's not maybe playing with the boys Mm -hmm. yet. Like, this would have been a a conversation to open. I've Googled, like, people kissing or girls kissing and things like that, you know? One of my friends, I might have said it on this podcast before, but a close friend of mine says her daughter, she caught her masturbating, and she let her know it was okay because the daughter was locking the door. Cause she was like, oh, bitch, know, I locked my door too. You ain't walking in. You're not well, ruining. I mean, ain't no lock the door to the black house. So the daughter uh, had to explain, right? And wait, she, the daughter just said, Mom, I'm locking my door because I'm playing no, with no, my no, pussy. No, she didn't. Oh. So she kept saying, like, why the fuck is your door locked? And then her, she told her mom. So then she says some shit like, now this little bitch is take, getting it overboard, talking about, I'm stressed. I'm stressed. I need to lock my door. <laughs> that is funny. See, yeah, that's funny. I mean, I, I get it. Um, so it says, if you can't do it in person and have a talk, about ma- masturbation or a toy. It's okay to leave the toy on their bed with a note saying, you're going through a lot oh, of nah, changes. Bro. I wish my mama would This will have. help you explore that your body made me feel and get to know yourself. Stuff. It's to- totally normal. Mm-hmm. Don't be embarrassed. Nah, bro. I'm here to talk about it if you want or if not. No. Nah, bro. That's not a solution. I don't that's like that one. Option. Then it says, if my mom would have done that, I would have like, Tammy. <laughs> pop yeah. them and ask them if they got the gift and if they have any questions. We live in a different era than our parents did, and we can't be as passive and absent-minded about education Mm-mm. on sex. So here's a, I guess here's another thing that I would think of. If we all look at our childhoods, how many times did we find our parents' toys? I feel like that's a story right. that a lot of people have. Yeah. Without meaning to come across the dildo, ill mom I was for gross. Money. Right. But so my crazy thing is, is that like, could be the my mom convers- has seven kids, right? So you think that she'll be fucking a lot? I literally like I had this conversation with my husband the other day. I'm like, I have no memory of like hearing my mom fucking, like finding oh, anything. Like she was so <sighs> secretive. And the other day I asked her, I'm like, how did you do it? And she's like, oh, I just waited for you guys to go to sleep. And Duh. I'm like, yeah, I know, but like, how the fuck did I not hear it? Because I'm the oldest. And I, I never, never heard it, but I did. Walk I never into my heard mom it. I never my walked in. Off. That was awkward. <laughs> and I'm like. God for that. But. Have you ever walked in any room? <laughs> no, but I definitely heard. My mom is a moaner. She's so extra. So Wait, I definitely so heard my mom. my mom was like the and man I'd of the be, relationship and like, she wouldn't oh, moan. Like, please, she'll just be like, Mom, we need carpet. <laughs> we don't, I don't like the tile floors anymore. Wait, that shit would travel. Have your kids heard you? 
How old are your kids? Well, my daughter's eight and my son is two. Okay. So right now what we're going through is like they still sleep in my bed. So we're what? just like, Aww. yeah, no judging, please. Wow. <laughs> um, so my they still sleep in my bed. I slept in my mom's bed. And too. the thing is, is like now we're like teenagers and we like sneak around to fuck. So we're like, okay, meet me downstairs in the living room. Damn, or, that's like, or meet me here, <laughs> meet me there. And it's just like, so we kind of like cover it up. But I feel okay. like my daughter's like kind of like oblivious to it still. Because she's two, right? She's nine. She's, she's, oh, she's, she's the, going on nine. She's the one going on nine. But in the she's too. like. So now my husband's like, oh, maybe we got to like no more like morning sex or, you know, because like now she's like she'll send my son upstairs like, oh, go see what they're doing. Now, let me ask you at nine <clears throat> with social media, because at nine I didn't have the access to phones right. and TV and porn, like not to the extent that right. it is now. Do you feel like at nine that conversation about sex or sex toys would happen? Or at what age do you think that's going to happen in this era, in this um, age? Right now, I kind of test the waters with her. Like, I'm very open with her. Like, she oh. knows I'm a doula. She knows that babies come out of vaginas. Like, she okay. knows, like, you know. That's not cool. the stewardess. Like, you know, like, we don't. What? The, the bird, the stewardess? Like the... <laughs> what? Not a no, stork. No, no, no. Stork? The bird. Is stork, that what it's called? Yeah, the stork. <laughs> <laughs> she said the stewardess. I'm like. <laughs> What's a stewardess? So now I know that's my flight attendant. <laughs> Yo, for you know those of y'all that said we I'm we made it. So Yo, listen, I'm, I, so I'm tired. coming from work. I went out last night. <laughs> I had company. So then we was cuddling all night. We was cuddling this morning. Like, what'd you bro, do? Bro, I'm thing? tired. Oh, I was just drinking. We drank a lot. Went Who to, is we? Went to Dumbo Who House. Is so um, K Camp and Genius were in town. Rappers. So okay. went to, met them at the studio. Then we went to PhD. Then we went to. Dumbo House, then we went to another bar. We like bar hopped all night. Nigga, I was in Brooklyn. That's how you know I was out late. So who was your company? <laughs> That's what you're not gonna be all up in my business about. <laughs> he, was nice. he was a friend. People. He was a friend. Mm. And we had, you know, a nice cuddle session. So I was up late, bitch. Did you cuddle something into your mouth? No, it was only cuddling. Thank you. <laughs> Thank well, you very I'm just much. Saying there's a big old belly right there. So. Yeah. yeah, no, that wouldn't happen with me. <laughs> no. And so, now I don't know. I, I get I get really weird looks. So Adam and Eve like sent us a whole bunch of like condoms. Mm -hmm. So now I have like mad options. And he was this is let me tell you the embarrassing part real quick. This is an embarrassing part of the story. And I felt like a whore. So <laughs> we get to the house and I take a shower because I went to work. Then like we were out everywhere in all these clubs. So I go to take a shower and I put my my winter robe on like this like furry robe that I have from Victoria's Secret. So we get in the bed and he goes to cuddle with me and my robe has pockets there was fucking condoms in the pockets i must have left them in there when lawyer bay came over like a oh, month and a half ago man. and so he's like oh you came to the bed ready i said i sure did not i don't know what those are doing in there and threw them across the room but it was so embarrassing because i'm like oh he must think i'm a whore there's just condoms ready in my robe that's I, what I, made you feel like a whore yo wait <laughs> Sorry. i was oh, wait. like fuck i think the bigger issue is what? how fucking cheesy i'm trying to imagine you're watching tv in your robe and suddenly and you're like so like slips out. So no 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 no. When when Lawyer Bay came over, I like because we were already laying in bed. So I hate the awkward. You got a condom? You got, yeah. Let me get up and go get it. Draws halfway hanging off. Her dick is out already, and now we got to go find a condom. So I'd normally like either put it in my pillowcase or in that case it was in my robe. But the, so this was for another <laughs> nigga, and he found it and thought I came to the bed ready for him, and I was like, no. Damn, well, how did those get in there? Like, I was so like, <laughs> oh, he was ready, bitch. I was like, no, we're cuddling. Yo, I'm trying to slide, I hope so, into every podcast here forward. I'm like making a commitment <laughs> that I just get to say that. No, I'm, just, man. I'm talking like Kodak Black so much, the white people at my job think it's like a thing I do. And I'm like, nope. <laughs> they, just, <laughs> they just think I'm like, like oh, your voice is hilarious. I'm like, no, that's not me. Okay, so let's so, go in. Horrible decision, let's, that's right. Go on, get in it. Okay, so let's start with the basics. First, what is a doula? Okay, a doula is pretty much a woman, a man. It could be. There's some men doulas. Um, and it's just a person that's there for support for a pregnant woman. There's actually so many different type of doulas, not even just What's for pregnant What's the difference women. from a doula and a midwife? Or a is it midwife? the same shit? No, it's not the same. A midwife is like actually like she catches the baby. Like Not doulas, catches it. It'd be shooting out. I thought that's what doulas like, do. No. They shoot out? Where, Wait, you you be the one to hold the hand? 
just here you go Pretty here's my walking hand. them through it so i walk them through it like i'm basically the one that like preps them for the midwife so it's like I'm there for like their support while they're pregnant. You know, if they have any questions, like, oh shit, what's an epidural? There's some women that have no idea. So, like, do you do this only when they're having their babies delivered, like in a house no. or naturally? Oh, so you be going to I, hospitals, oh. like, girl, I'm gonna just stand by your bed. I've only attended one ho um, home birth. And I did one. not I know. Thought, when I, I thought about doulas, I, rest, I thought it was I like thought it was in, in your home. house, in the bathroom. No. Okay. Everything is like mostly all my patients, my wait, my patients, not my patients, my clients are. In the hospital. Where do they find you? And on, on Craigslist, like they is find that... me like Facebook. Like I promote on my Facebook. Um, there's actually like this website that's called um, DoulaMatch.com. Of course, there's an app. Doula of match. course. Yeah. So it's like you go there and you How make do you get like matched? a profile, and then they see like your qualifications, and then they hit you up like, Hey, I'm explain, looking for this person. Could you explain your qualifications? Like so, what's, what's on your Doula app so qualifications? On, is on it my like page, Tinder? Like you swipe. No, you don't swipe. But it's kind of like an Sounds old like school, fun. like, MySpace kind of thing. Okay. Because you have, oh, you have like, a whole profile. Yeah. Like, you have your own profile, like, a little picture of you, and then, like, where you're located. And your top eight. And you, basically, no. like, oh, you got to okay. put all that. So, like, these um, are my doctors. These are my favorite books. So, these are, like, what I love to <laughs> do, tools. like, reviews from previous clients. Okay. Um, And it's basically, like what information I know over the next person. So like someone might like me because You're I have mom? the same hair as them. It's, it's simple Girl, because it's like we're connecting. Yeah. I get what she's saying because so it's think like, about when you pick out a doctor. So think about like, it. Like, how do you honestly really speaking, know what dermatologist like, as out of a the 12? As a doula, I wouldn't want to go to a white doula. Right. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, and it's not even like a race thing. It's just something that can we, what do we have in common? You know, like if a person comes in and they're, and, and like, let's say it's fully all white doctors, all white nurses. So what do we have in common? Because now you're on their team. Right, right, right. And Low you know, key, like, I was looking for a black doula, but I knew it was fucked up not to like get Latinos <laughs> more in here more. Good, Every I'm show glad. we have, there's even mad though, Latino. Even though the thing is, is like, as a doula, it's like so rare to find Latinas and it's kind of rare to find even black doulas because I would hire a black doula before I hire a white doula. Isn't doula a black ass? It sounds like some African shit. What is it's it? It's actually Greek. Oh. It comes from the like the word doule, and it's um mm. it means female slave. So, Let it out. so that's kind of basically that's like what, what I am. That's what you want to be. Basically, <laughs> you a doule ho. So that's basically like <laughs> what I am if you think about it, because like I'm your female slave, like I'm your slave while you're pregnant. You pay me, of course. That's what I, we was how gonna get. It. How much? So, you get paid? How much you get paid? It depends. Like I'm not what's certified. An, what's an average? So I'm not a certified doula. Like I do it based off of like I taught myself. Like mm. everything, <clears throat> everything for me has been self-taught. I haven't done any training. I haven't done anything. I've just read a ton of books. So I've you ain't just, got no qualifications. I've just. This is kind of like so. My mom, right? My mom's bored. Mm -hmm. I don't want my mom to go back to work and have a schedule. Mm -hmm. But she's been thinking about watching kids, and I was like. I wonder if you can't with no qualifications. I made her a little profile literally last night. So many yeah. people love that she's a mom and she's older. Yeah. She's late 60s. They and don't care. Like, and You've... it's all about like the connection because of course like they have to interview me. Right. It's not like oh I'm just going to hire her because she's pretty. It's not like that. So I have to I sit do. with them and then I have to explain That's to them. That's how I found my hairstylist. Like... <laughs> I just, I was like, girl, I thought you well, I was going to holler at you, girl. You know, it makes sense. <laughs> you so, wanted to look good so she could right, make you, you look right, good. You so right, how right, often, right. like, how, I guess more so, more, aside from what do they pay you, how do they pay you? Because if they're texting you all the time, like, obviously you're not charging. So basically the way it works is, like, most women hire a doula around, like, their third trimester, around like 33 weeks. Thank okay. you for breaking so it down. Okay. from there on, it's like, okay, so we decide you're gonna be, um, I'm gonna be your doula. We're a match, perfect, great. So from that moment that they have the initial interview and they're like, okay, I love you, whatever, what have you, I give them about like seven, seven to 10 days to decide if they wanna sign my contract. And then that's when I receive my first payment, which is a partial payment. I only receive 50%. Okay. And then once it comes down to 38 weeks, um, I'm sorry, not 38 weeks, 36 weeks, I receive my final payment. So can I ask you, because when you have you have a due date and then you can come anytime before that due date, anytime after. Exactly. So at that point, are you also on call? Yes. For and whenever they're going to the hospital? And that's the reason why, because like in our area, like in 
East Coast and like you know New York City, New Jersey, we charge pretty high compared to like Oklahoma. How much? Oklahoma will charge just like five hundred dollars, let's say five hundred. And but for like in our area, anywhere it can range from anywhere from seven fifty to like twenty two hundred. Okay. okay. It just oh. the so more shit you know, for the more pregnancy. money you make. That's how much. Yeah. It's just the more you know, the more money now, you can charge. Now, what do I want a doula for? Do I want a doula to coach me through pushing the baby out, or do I want a doula to be there after I have a baby? When do I? I feel like <clears throat> the most important time, if you're like a first-time mom, I would say the doula from the beginning, like, you know, 33 weeks. And, of okay. course, if you want a doula, then that means that you're most likely you're very informed already on, like, what you plan on doing for your birth. So you just want somebody for, like, reassurance. So there's some women okay. that are, like, they come to this country, let's say, and they have no family here. So they're just, like, I just um, want that's, somebody. That's where, that my, that's where my question was coming from yeah. because I wanted to know what you offer that, say, a family member or a husband or the baby daddy or a friend would not Can't be able do. to offer because, like, so so Weezy has not had kids yet. I have not had kids mm-hmm. yet, but both of our parents clearly done shot out kids. Right. So... Our moms could do essentially what you would do. Right. So you're saying you are hired for those individuals who may not have that support system. Not only them. that, but it's like, okay, for instance, for my daughter's birth, my mom wasn't here, so my grandma was here. Mm. And just her presence drove me crazy. And I love my grandma. Right. You know, like she's dope. Like she's always there for me. Yeah, she I gives told me my mom whatever. She can't be in the room. She hung you know, up on me. but at president. that moment, she was my mental block. And that's what a lot of people don't know. You're like, it's just uh, like spiritual pussy guide. Right. So it's just like me and you connect spiritually and you don't connect like that with your mom, even though like she's your best friend or whatever the case is. At that moment, you're like, I don't know if I really want to like, would you want to shit in front of your mom? And, you see, know? and it just depends on sense. like who you sense. are. Yeah. I, so. I, I hid even getting my period from my mom for like the first year. Right. Now, now we're comfortable. And I do look at my mom as my best friend. But even when she be trying to talk tell me about her sex life I'd be like girl I want to hear that so I still right. don't think I would want her to see my pussy wide yeah. open and it's just like you know and it's like you know what I mean like I don't know like, my, my mom I could t- what you're saying I t- hope my mom would drive me nuts yeah oh your we, mom yeah like literally <laughs> let me tell you <laughs> yo mom I don't want her in my room either so my she'd grandma, be all making sure everything are my you mom is honey? really sweet but she's a lot yeah, she's it's a lot overbearing she's like, a lot yeah. my mom told me I, I just had a biopsy done and she's like oh god I fly me out I wish I was there what are you gonna do she would make me anxious yeah. when I shouldn't be and anxious. And that's the so thing. That like, sense. you want to be as sense. relaxed as can be, like, when you're pushing you on your baby. Because it's like, you think about it, like, you're stressed, and you're, the first thing you do is, like, tighten your stomach and, like, tighten your area. So you don't want that. You want it to be as loose and relaxed as possible. We have a lot of male listeners. So my mm-hmm. question would be, do you feel like husband, because a lot of men don't want to see that or don't know how to react or don't want to be in the room. Right. Do you feel like, you do get men that also reach out to you for their yes. um, women. And, and there's that, now that you mentioned like men, it's there's actually men that it's like a fetish for them. Like it's just like of course there it's is. It's like spam. Niggas, like nasty. you know, like I'll get a random text, like a random message, like, "Hey, my wife's in labor right now. Can you tell me what to do?" And that turns them on. So it's just like, what? Uh, no. Wait, what do you mean? But, Can you, yeah. Wait, what do you mean? In what so, way? So like, I'll get a random message on Instagram, let's say, like, "Hey, my wife is about to um push our baby out. Can you give me instructions on how to take the baby out? Like, does she have to be a certain position?" And then you just have to like kind of see like what where's your midwife and then you like go from there and it's like oh no 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 she doesn't have a midwife i'm here or whatever the case is like you so you kind of like catch on so yeah but besides that i honestly visuals of reading what i honestly think that (sighs) men should definitely be involved Mm. because the same way a baby is made is the same way a baby could come out what you you mean? want your man to be there. You want oh, him yeah. to. Oh, love I'm, you. Like, I'm like, no, but yeah, about? no. Honestly, that's what you want. You want your man to be there. You right. want him to be hugging you, kissing you, because that oxytocin, that love, is what opens you up. What's the difference between oxytocin and serotonin? Like serotonin. I mean, not serotonin. Serotonin. I'll be let me let this one talk make fun of you. <laughs> Wait, no, I do. What is serotonin? Man? Serotonin are the levels that increase to like make you happy. Well. Oxytocin is basically like a hormone in your body that is just like kind of like your love, your love hormone. Okay. So it's the like serotonin is like when when that's you're depleted, your ha- yeah, and you know, that's when, you're when depressed your happiness and, and like. Okay. So this one is like your it has love to do with hormone. genetic factors and so metabolism you want and that digestive that issues. Was- <laughs> 
<laughs> no, like, like for example, when I was on Lexapro, it was to boost levels of serotonin. Yeah. So, so oxytocin that's like your, is oxytocin like... Oxytocin is basically like your love hormone. So it's oh. just like when you're getting like aroused, that's what's happening. Like you're producing I've heard the a lot word, of obviously, oxytocin. but like I, I didn't really know the whole time what oxytocin is. Yeah. So that's basically it. So like when I have like clients that have a spouse or partner, I'm just like, listen, love her. You know, like my job is just to be there. If you just need me just to be there to hold space for you, that's okay. I, even if you need me just to take pictures, that's fine. But the whole point is, is like, if you have your partner, be there for them. Because right, right. it's just like at that moment, a woman is so open. And literally. you don't know, literally. <laughs> literally. It's open so as well. you don't know if, you know, like in my mind, I'm just like, damn, why is my husband sitting over there? Well, he doesn't love me. Like, right. you know, so it's just like mm. that right there can stop you from dilating, from like opening up and delivering the so baby. So as a doula, in let's give we can look at either monthly or yearly right what would you say about the number of clients you get in a in a year let's do a year um it honestly depends okay um like how many like, could you do at one time at one time Not you just have to, the whole the whole point of like a successful doula is to have a great backup doula so you can't do this by yourself because it's just like wait what you got, right. that's your backup doula? No, that's my. She was actually she one of my. Doula. Yeah, I was one. She was one of my clients. She doula. Shut, she doula. She doula you. <laughs> Wait, so why yeah. you not over here, man? I want to hear about how, how you got doula. Um, like, I'm like, what? So, okay, so basically, it's like, let's say I get five women in one month, right? Okay. Oh, okay. but you rich. Got it. Got so, it. Got it. Got it. If I have five women she in one money. month. And they, two of them go into labor at the same time. Uh, I understand. I can't be at can't the be both there. places. So one how you New split, York how you split one, that check? I, with the- so <laughs> I give them um, 50%. So because I did Yo, most I of the tight, my nigga. The hardest I'll tell you part, right now, but you I'm hate gonna... you hate percentage, bro. Because you would do. You just want all the money, bitch. You don't <laughs> no, want to no, give no, nobody I mean, nothing. No, not the money. If I was like, fuck, I connected with this person and they were right, already somewhere right. else. Yeah. And that's not all doulas do this, but I always recommend. No, but you for start off, bitch. Get your coin. My inter- for like whoever I'm interviewing with, just be like, hey. My homie over here, she's my backup doula. She's great. I can have her FaceTime you. You want her to come? Because at the end of the day, you never know. And like you said, if we have a connection and then here comes my friend, it's just like, I don't like her. Get her out. That sucks for you to be double booked. So then it sucks. And then it it just messes up the business. And then it gives me a bad rep. because. So so when do you let go? When do you stop talking to them? Um, I stop around. Clearly never, bitch. Well, I offer. That's your sister, she said. (laughs) Well, yeah. Okay. (laughs) So so the way it works is basically like I have a package. Um, My package package is. Okay. So I offer two prenatal visits which means that I visit them from the moment that they hire me until the moment that they give birth two times. Okay. And throughout those visits, I just give them, so I answer whatever questions they may have. Are like most I, doulas moms? No. Okay. There's some some doulas that aren't even, they don't even want kids. That's me, baby. Maybe I'll do this. <clears throat> it's just whatever they feel like. It seems like you like, want to be, have a little bit of a testimony when someone's like, yeah, your nipples are going to feel like this. Bitch, how you know? Google. Yeah, because I, I read a lot and I learned a well, lot. Well, so. you've experienced it. Yeah, for me. So but that's I'm, what saying, I'm saying like. Okay, okay, that makes sense. And there's women that will be like, oh, you never had a kid? Bye. You're not Mom, I, I wouldn't want to do it with that. My mama had me. But, yeah. I can, hey. Yeah. So <laughs> there's some women. Don't be but cutting into my There's a chick. lot of doulas, actually, that don't even have kids. And they're just like, I don't plan on having kids. Or either they're like 18 and they're just starting off. And or it's, it's more like, just like an emotional connect, like connection. Like a connection with a person. I right. feel like I, I make really good connections with people. Right. So then you're also building kind of a friendship. Right. Even though right. they're paying for it. Yeah. But so like during bug, those, like, I like. those yeah. two visits, you give them the two prenatals if they want. Some people only want one. Some people are okay. just like, I already know. I don't really need that much. So during that time, you answer like the way I do it is like I'm like okay so we only have like the visits are usually like an hour to two hours okay so I'm like pick some topics that you feel are important that you really want to know about before you push your baby out so we discuss that okay and then I attend their birth so I'm on call from 36 weeks until the moment that they go into labor Mm. and some women they go into labor 32 38 weeks some women go up to 42 weeks okay so it's very tough. There's being a call. window. Yeah, yeah it's you make them pay you again after thirty eight. No. Oh, because that's, nice. that's already included. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. so then, yeah. once they have their baby, do you involve yourself in checking in with them as well yes. again? So I do the two prenatal. I I attend the birth and then two postpartum. 
So for those postpartums, I usually offer them like three to four hours, and then for so those you just visits, basically like give them encouragement with the baby, like or what? Well, some moms are so exhausted that they're just like. Help me. Take you a baby. babysitter after. Pretty much. Okay. As bad as it sounds, because a lot of doulas are just like, no, I'm not a babysitter. I'm not a nanny. You know, like but that's some get offended support. by that. Yeah, you're but it, supporting listen, them. Listen, I'm helping. there to support them. And I did a lot of work last summer as a postpartum doula. And that was it. Like, some women are just like. You really like kids. I'm. And that's the crazy thing. I don't like kids. Get the wait, get wait, out wait. of here. <laughs> Bro, you yeah. are the third one. Exactly. Because yeah, they're mine. I like them because they're mine. A lot of women say that. <laughs> but it's like. Damn. What I made have, you want to do it? Then. I have nine siblings, right? I'm the only girl. I'm the Jesus oldest. Fuck. Holy shit. I could well, not. I have How a little sister, actually. I'm sorry. I'm not the only girl. I used to be the only girl. Because you look like um, 20. I'm 29. Okay. 29. So, okay. Um, so I've always been around kids. And I used to tell my mom, I'm not having no fucking kids because I'm I still pretty much that. like help you raise these little freaking boys. And I'm still raise, helping her. And then I, I got older. Wait, and you I was had like, eight brothers under you? I have. I have. My mom has. Six kids under me, and then my dad. Are has you Puerto two. Rican or? I'm Puerto Rican, yeah. Oh yeah, she they they, they be shooting them out. <laughs> Yo, listen. Every time I go to the Bronx, pregnant bitches. My yeah. every listen, Puerto Rican. Chick. My sister is six, and my daughter's eight. Are so. y'all like? So this might be something, and I mean this I, culturally, it, like big family. Well, it could just be a myth. Is like Latinas more um, Zuma, fertile? The zoo myth like, I don't know. Ben, Are y'all more shot. fertile? What? I don't know. Oh, they be saying, Honestly, like, that, I don't that, know. That Puerto Rican bitches get pregnant way quicker than any other race. I have no idea. I swear to God, I heard maybe that. Maybe they just want but, to. Like, they just fertile. Like, like well, my yo, mom, maybe it's the right to be. I don't pregnant. know what no. it is. It's, I it's mean, something y'all eating. The penny? Just like, y'all uh, eat penny? Uh, yeah, we do, but I don't know. It's so, Perni. That's how you say it. Pernin. Perni, see? Perni. <laughs> Bitch, I'm in the Bronx. I said it right, right? Perni. It's real support. Perni. Perni. So, okay, wait. I want to... Let's go back to the bases. Okay. Like, right. All right. Ask, my bad. I, I think, was really focused on if y'all fertile... If you I don't know if we're fertile, that. but I know oh, okay. my mom well, always said she like, wanted that many how kids. How babies are made. stuck to it. You know? So you babies are made. in the pussy. Are, and you know, come. Like, my fucking... So right. she thinks so, the sperm have eggs. No. What? <laughs> Did you say something about sperm having eggs? So basically, <laughs> like, the way conception works Yeah, is, let's talk about conception. All right, you have sex, two people have sex, whatever, and then... <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Um, and then the sperm travels and then hits an egg, and then that's how basically now, it's done. Uh, let's talk about ovulation. Right. right. So, like, you can only get pregnant when you're ovulating, correct? I feel correct. Like that's some bullshit. But, this is that science I don't believe. Swear to God, you can so only get pregnant say. like two times out of the month, but yet no, bitches be getting pregnant. Le- lives in you for like four to five days. Yes. That's them because they just had to say that. So you're f- what? <laughs> <laughs> you're going deep. You're going deep. <laughs> you're going. Deep. I know. I won't go deep, but I don't believe this shit. Too many people pop up pregnant for me to only have two Let's days of ovulation. Let's say there's bitch. four weeks of out of the month. Right. One of the weeks you're on your period. Uh-huh. Right. Three weeks. You have to fuck. Bitch. One of those weeks, you're fertile the whole Look time. Look at the month of And March. out of one of those weeks, like that sperm you is still sitting there. You technically have a 30% chance of getting pregnant every time. So that's why I, I think it's bullshit month. that they say only two days. Well, no, 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 it's no, not. It's not peak for. It's like peak. You uh, usually have like about like anywhere from like seven to so 10 So here's days my calendar. Like, I, want, I just want to show you so, we, so you yeah, can like take a look Yeah, like if you, it. if let's, you have. Let's look at April. So I'm fertile. You see all of these days, actually, up until March. So seven days I'm fertile. March 31st mm-hmm. to the end of this week. This but you better week. not fucking in Chicago. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> but anyway, so here's that flower day. That's right. when it's like the real That's fucking day. That's like the day. highest chance that you can get pregnant. Right. But you can get pregnant anytime those so green dots are there. So the sperm is living. If, yep. if, I, if someone comes in me and I'm ovulating here, the sperm can live in my pussy for So here's days. my question. If you fuck on the 7th, you telling me there's absolutely no way you can get pregnant if he come in your pussy on the 7th. No. What if a, the because egg you, doesn't drop and it's still there? Here no. was your ovulation peak and point. Yeah, that was oh, the so highest point. that means point. the egg drops on the 5th. So after that, yeah, so after that you're done. So why, why, is, why, is, why is there still a dot on the 6th? Because she's still ovulating. The la- her last day is the six, but she has hours, like a low yeah. chance. Oh, so, so like these statistics. Then you bring statistics. Right into this now, shit. this shit. This is why I was freaking out about that Plan B, my nigga. Because here's when I went to New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> it's thrown off now because I took the Plan B, bitch. The flower was like two days after, and um, I was. 
was terrified. I was, and he's like, I don't know why you, I don't know why you, why you, yeah, you so don't much. know. Yeah. It's crazy because when you posted that, I actually got a message sent in, and I'm not sure if you've taken, um, plan B or even your weight, but more so my weight before mm -hmm. my weight loss, there's actually something that says that plan B does not actually work for women or is very unlikely to work in women over 175 pounds. Shut up. Yes, ma'am. What? Yes, ma'am. And if you look That's this up. That's a vanilla shit. Yes. That's up. <laughs> no, and so we looked this up and the, the, the odds of it actually working for, yeah, look it up, girl. I'm telling you. So the odds for, for maybe, um, more, you know, curvy women and, and overweight women, maybe you do want to use something other than plan B. What the fuck are high yeah. BMI women supposed to do about emergency contraception? Exactly, yeah. High BMI women have a lower chance of plan B working. Considering the average them. woman weighs 168 pounds, Let's yeah, see. that is. Look, she's looking it up right now. Yeah, so okay, I would. Okay, it's it's the BMI they're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So for someone like me who's five foot one and weighed two thirty at one point, yeah, bitch, that shit. Was, I was popping skittles at that point. <laughs> I was just praying <laughs> that my ovulation shit was off. Because I, I ain't got okay, no. Okay, so uh, the World Health Organization <laughs> um, suggests that it's not that much of an issue, like people say. Um, there's four studies published that says while data is limited, the findings suggest that women with obesity have an increased risk, but it's not as it, increased risk still sound increased, like something yeah. to me. If you sit here telling me these odds the of these data, dots on the your data, app, the data to review is still extremely limited. Yeah. I don't know how, because I, I'm not sure how you even so get your study on that. that. Like if, exactly. if you just haven't gotten enough women, women in certain BMIs to try right. it, like the studies of, you, you have to try that on human people. Oh, human this is people. interesting. Love and love and whatever. Y'all know the L word that make you not have a baby. It's not the only morning Libido? Article. What's the no. L word? <laughs> Levito. <laughs> What's the L word? Levon gestural? The like the ingredient. Say it again. Be Levon gestural or whatever it is. Bitch, you French. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh <my laughs> Levon gestural. Uh, no, but the, the plan B wasn't available, right? When I walked into the Walgreens. Did I tell you all the story about how I went to yeah, three Walgreens? Yeah, yeah. So I went to it. a bunch of them because right, it was busy where we were at. So when I went to the last one, I came in the car and I didn't have plan B. I had this shit called Allegra. He said, nigga, what the hell is that? Allegra? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Isn't that, that, that's not for allergies? I was about to say, isn't that allergy medication? <laughs> yeah, let me look up the name. <laughs> oh, but you just got lucky then, bitch, because. No, 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 no. It has the same active ingredient, that love and genetic cholesterol. Um, 1.5. After pill. Allegra. Allegra. <laughs> no, bitch, that's my allergy. Oh, like, it's definitely allergy. <laughs> Yo, all I know is when I walked in, he was like, he looked at me like, was it cheap or something? Like, what the fuck? So I guess for, th for again, I Ella. Guess Oh, oh, you was oh, all Allegra. <laughs> You're not gonna ask. Me. <laughs> so what? What other question you got about shooting babies? Uh, okay, so okay, so the babies weren't from there, right? <laughs> right? So basically, I'm interested in knowing kind of like what it feels like to be pregnant, right? My, oh. the, the, what I want to know and what I'm trying to basically push out there is us respecting pregnant people and mothers more. So, like, let's kind of just walk us through the first trimester. I've heard a lot about women. Amy Schumer is a popular one that yeah. is throwing up like crazy the entire pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, wh what is it like? The second... So, for me, my pregnancies have been amazing. <laughs> That's um, why you, you want a what third. What makes a pregnancy amazing? Yeah. Listen, there's women, like you said, like, she throws up, like, crazy. Um, yeah, she's one of them. Like, she was just always me. sick everything she couldn't eat she there's women that just can't eat can't get out of bed they can't go to work they yeah, can't do that. like everyday activities and for me i didn't have that problem that's probably why i got my third i mean one, that's the same too like there's certain women when they're on their women period get better rest. like yeah. they be ready to they can't like right. i remember being in school girls wouldn't come to school because they was on a period yeah. and, and it's I just like, like that's not an excuse like, like, I, I, do, right. I, get, I, get, like, I, I would say like Every other period, I violently throw up from the pain. Really? Oh, wow. And you know, now that you mention that it, too, I wonder yeah. if it's like, if they have a connection, like if women have crazy periods. Did you have crazy periods? I never had crazy periods. Me neither. Mine, are, mine, mine are were three just days. like, mine oh my regular. God. So it's now crazy I'm periods, thinking, So you about to throw up your whole pregnancy, bitch. I'm be like, what's the horrible? I'm if that has <laughs> Scissors having that. Wait, we going to like, we gonna still be doing a show if you get pregnant? I gotta talk to someone pregnant having sex all the time. <laughs> Ew! I ain't gonna want to imagine that. You be having sex with with your belly? Why not? Why wouldn't she? Wait, like you don't feel the baby going up and down when he's behind you? No, the baby like just bunches up. You don't up. feel Isn't like it, you it, have like a, a baby stocking? watching you? A baby like, watching me? <laughs> like no. you know, that's where dimples come from. 
Oh, my kids no. always ask me where dimples come from. So. It's, from the, it's from the dick hitting I'm like, the baby. oh, uh, you must have been touched <laughs> by a fairy. There you go. So, okay, you have a good pregnancy in that week. Talk, let's talk about what happens so, to your vagina. So, basically, oh. everybody says well, it's good to fuck on your, it is. when you're pregnant. Well, for some women. Some women have, like, super dry vaginas when they're pregnant. What causes um, that? Do you know? It's just, like, hormone levels. Like, okay. your mm. pH balance is, like, a little bit everywhere. Because you need um, pickles and shit. Right. So you're eating like crazy shit, so your body's going crazy, and then right. everything that you have inside of you is going to your baby. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you're normally, like, always, like, wet, and you don't have to worry about using lube, and then you come around and your man's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You know, like, what's wrong? Am I not turning you on? But people say oh, the and it's just like, the best. Do you feel like your sex is better cause you're, when you're pregnant? I do. Why I feel that? like, because it's just like... You're so First horny? of all, you're already pregnant. So what's the worst that can happen? Oh, you just let let him shoot the club up. Man. Like, there's what's the worst that can happen? You're already pregnant. I mean, you can so, still. There's still. Oh, I guess if that's your like, boyfriend. She's like, don't be saying my man coming back. Yeah, with no, you're right. <laughs> you are, I was like, my bad. Well, man. you know, you ain't yeah, yeah, yeah. Besides an STD, of course. Okay, you never okay. Know, you never know. Right. But okay. I mean, so I feel like that right there is just like your comfort level. Mm, and then that makes from sense. there, it's like now you have like your body is just like so sensitive. So like just by like yeah, so it's just it's just like sometimes it it's some I have my days like sometimes it's like it takes me forever to orgasm, and then there's days that I like come in like two minutes, and it's just because like your body is just like. Do you feel sexier because of your you know your breasts are getting bigger and your hips? This pregnancy, yes. My last two pregnancies. You look really good. I've always yeah. been. I'm not like self conscious or anything, but I mean, of course, you think like, mm, what if he doesn't like me, or you know, like just like right. different changes of your body. Does your husband make you feel good about your body while he you're does? What, he, what could some men that have pregnant women listening just right now? Be honest, like you know, like well, wait, not don't all be, don't not well, all not in a bad way, not in oh, a bad be honest way. I'm in a sorry. good way, yeah. in a good way. Like you know, just express yourself to her. You know, like just let her know mm. because even though if you if you guys have a great relationship. And you tell her all the time, like, oh, you look good, you know, you're sexy, whatever. Tell her more. And we actually because... had a pregnant couple at the New York show, and mm-hmm. they was beautiful. Ooh, they, they, came, I they know were so fun. Right, they was beautiful. No, and then yeah. both of them came, and I was just like, you remember they were standing up. So, like, we, we don't do, um, we had one, our first show, we would sell, we sold standing room. Mm-hmm. Never again, right? We're right. like, we literally sell Want tickets. Every, exactly. Right. So we yeah. saw people standing up in the back, and I'm like, yo, like y'all didn't buy tickets to sit. Come sit. The first person to come sit was pregnant. And I was like, yeah. yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Because imagine how it was when they went home. Because it's just like, you're ready. Like, your body is just like, like for a woman, it's just like, your body's so sensitive. So even just like, him brushing by me, it's just like, if he brushes by my boobs, it's just like, oh. You know, like, it's just oh, like, ready. Whoa. You know, and it's like. Open as fuck. <laughs> All right. How, how much time we have because I actually have a lot of questions about I'm gonna you I'm gonna let you knock all these questions out oh okay so let's get this in all right one of my girlfriends told me that she had to get stitched up as many women do right Naya said the same thing basically yeah basically your pussy rips what's up with that shit okay so the problem with your fucking pussy ripping is just that a lot of women are coached when they push so the whole point of it all, it goes back to, like, hippie shit. You know, like, honestly, the the OBGYNs, you know, everything for them is a business. So everything is on a time frame. So they mm. want to rush everything. So by them telling you, lay back, put your legs up, and push when I tell you to, that's automatically, you're trying to push well, it out a fucking force it out. A watermelon when your body's not ready for it to come out. So not everything is ready to... So what is the best position to have a baby in? I would say the best position will be standing up. Standing up up is what I heard. Um, It can be like while you're on all fours, like on the bed. It can be sitting on the toilet. You know, like it's just the whole point of... Yeah. With your legs up though. Like no, like no, literally. Yeah, it's, but on the toilet. But like, so there's like this. The whole this, thing is gravity. Like you put your legs up like the that. squatty right. body, like the squatty right. body. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh you so mean, I thought you were. I thought you meant like okay. No, I no. Like, you yeah. can actually like women that do it at home. Some of them deliver on their toilet because it's just like, first of all, for them, sure. it's just like. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> first of them. First of all, for them, it's just like you're sitting straight up. So Look up women automatically. Have a baby on the toilet real quick. We can't. What if it look nasty? Automatic. It will yeah, look nasty. I, no. 
I just want to see a pic. Look, I don't want to see automatically. No, uh, yeah, it's gonna just look nice. Offline, offline. Mm, offline will look. I'll nice. show you yeah. offline. I, why we gotta get offline? I'm I only, online I right wanna, now, I man. D L L O. I dialed up. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. we can talk about so, eating shit every week, but like, <laughs> bitch. Yeah, I don't want to see a baby coming out of a vagina into a toilet. I don't want to like on. see the whole toilet. I just want to see. Hey like, guys, if you're tuning in right now, go to Google on your mobile device and look Dive up. <laughs> And look up. What the fuck? Bruh. What the fuck? Hold on, let me see. I don't see. know what type of accent I was trying to have. I, I wanted to sound like a stewardess, ho. <laughs> stewardess? <laughs> okay, wait. So, standing right. up. Now- so, yeah. So, basically, the whole point, like you asked me before, um, why shouldn't we lay on our backs? Yeah. So, we shouldn't lay on our backs because if you think about it, we're like this, right? So the baby's like playing a game. So he's tr- the baby's trying to come out. So why do hospitals keep doing it? Because it's easier for them to have access. So everything is to make it easier for them. They don't mm. want to make it easier for the birthing How? woman. How is it easier for them to have access? Because if they have you with your legs open, they can go and be like, you know what? Oh, the baby's not coming fast enough. Let me get that vacuum. And it's like whoosh, right there. Or cut. Or, or cut. let me, let me cut you let open. Me. Let me like slice you open. They let got like, like an abortion vacuum? Yeah. Right. Wait. The, it's the it's a vacuum. It's like a literally a vacuum that they put on the baby's head, <laughs> and they suck the baby out. Shut up. Yeah. Oh. No, no, we're not gonna watch that. That's what we're not gonna watch. She's like, turn it on. No. no I said turn my mic down. Oh. Screen. And that's the thing. It's just like a lot of women are oh, wow. trying to that. stay that away sense. from doing that. That makes because sense. that's where the doctors come in, and it comes back to men. Like men became OBGYNs, mm-hmm. and then they took over the field and how women give birth. This makes sense. So if you think about it, back in the day, it was women helping women. And women didn't have C-sections because how the hell are you going to have a C-section, C-section in the middle of your country or like whatever the right. case is? You figured it out by <sighs> doing what? Switching positions. So like I said, the same way you make a baby is the same way you get that baby out. So, so if you're standing up, right, like mm-hmm. will hospitals let you do that? Well, the thing is, is that you're allowed to do whatever you want. <laughs> at the as crazy as it sounds yeah, because like 16 G's too because it's just yeah, like expensive. it's your birth it's your body and you have the consent to say no to anything that they say <sighs> but the thing is is like Fuck. people are scared of the modern medicine and they're just like oh well he went to school so he knows how I should give give birth to a baby but how science y'all can never told deliver y'all, y'all a baby. just be believing what men right. tell y'all right See what I'm talking no, about? It's, it's, it's all coming. Y'all want a motherfucker to try me. I be trying to tell true. y'all. And it's just like. Thank you. I, I love you. Keep no, going it's about true. this. We can have the baby <laughs> blueprints. That's the name of this episode. Baby because blueprints. Because it's like, it's like, how can a man tell a woman how to give birth? I know that's right. How? Say that. He can't feel He never felt it ever. You never felt it. Uh-huh. Keep and talking. And he probably won't even be able to survive it, honestly, because of the pain tolerance is like breaking like 52 bones at one time. Okay. So. Oh, did you go natural or epidural? Yes. I've done all three naturals. Fuck um, you. No tears. <sighs> Why yeah. do you think not? Were you not on your Only back? Only because I actually was on my back. For my both of them, that's where I felt the most comfortable. So that's the thing. Like, I tried different positions. I tried the standing. And standing, I, c- I just couldn't tolerate it. And then for my daughter, I didn't know any better. Like, I had an OBGYN. He was, like, chilling in the back of the room, like, eating my food while I was there with my fucking legs open. Shut and up. And some student nurse was delivering like, me. <laughs> See me here, you bitch! So some student nurse was delivering me. And it just happened to work out that she came out with me on my back. Fine, no a problem. A student nurse? hmm What do they call it? Because I know it's a bridezilla. I'm going to be the other kind. What is it? What mom like a, a momzilla, I so guess you can say. Mm. So I did it like I was kind of like no, I was like, kind of aware of like what you should do and what you shouldn't do. But I was 19, so at the end I was just like I really don't have much to say. But I always recall like the nurses coming in like, "Are you sure this is your first baby? Are you sure?" And I'm just like, "Yo, what the fuck? Yeah, it's my first know baby. If I like, spit a baby, like, yeah." They're just like, "You're so calm," and I'm like, "Because I'm fucking calm. Like, what do you want me to do? Be screaming my but head also, off?" Your mom made you not not do an epidural. Sorry, no? Um, my mom never had an epidural. Mm. So she shot out all them all kids, of them. and she had oh. me when she was 15. So, and no epidural. It was kind of like a punishment for her. Like, my grandma was like, nope, you wanted to have a baby at a young age? No epidural. Push that shut, baby out. Shut <laughs> up. Yeah. Where, where were you born? Were you born in Puerto Rico? No, I was born here. I was born in Elizabeth, where I'm from. Bro, oh, so um, Dub, um, shout out to the Lady W. Uh, she came on our show. She always says 
she didn't have an epidural. She, when I asked her, I just remember her response. She was like, slaves did it. Like Right. And that's the way, yeah. that's my mentality all the time with a lot of things. It's just like, okay, so my ancestors did it. How selfish of me is it to do that when something so simple that our body, shit, I'm selfish like, as our fuck. body is made to do shit. it. <laughs> but when you think about it and you like educate yourself on having an epidural, things could go worse for you than what it can go good for you. <sighs> so okay. it's like I think I'll die from pain, you outweigh your your pros and your cons. Of right. Course. For some women, they need an epidural and that helps them because like they're so exhausted, their body's not opening up because they're so done. Like right. they need a rest. And then for others, it's just like some women could just do it. You know what? And I I'm feel like fight of being to the point where you can't have it. There is a point where you can't. Right. Right? I don't feel like there's a point that you can't. No, doctors will like, say, oh, it's too far. Like, they yeah, gotta cut it. And that's that's where it comes again. It's just like, who the are C-section. you to tell me that I can't deliver my baby? If he come out with a loopy eye, he come out with a loopy right, eye. Right, right. And it's just like... <laughs> Bro, shut up. <laughs> no, it's, it's the honest truth because it's like, our bodies are made to do this. Our, <laughs> we don't. When we were made to make babies, like to deliver babies, we weren't given a time frame. It was never like, oh, you have to have a baby within 24 hours. If not, cut that baby out. Who made that rule? Right. But the problem is, is like it's so instilled mm-hmm. in us that as soon as our water breaks, we have to go to the hospital. As soon as um, you have a contraction, you have to go to the hospital. So wait, is, if, if you your don't. water breaks, you shouldn't? Doesn't that mean you're like... You don't have to. You have actually 24 hours before there's like a serious risk of you having like an infection or whatever after you know what your it is? water it's breaks. Movies. It breaks and they're like, honey. Right. It's every fucking yeah. That's the first fucking reaction that everybody's just like, oh shit, I have to go to the we hospital. We gotta rush to the hospital. I'm we like, sex listen. in the city. Remember in that movie? Her water broke yelling at Big? Yeah. And she waddled to and the cab. And she waddled to the cab. Like, for what? It's not that oh, deep. I didn't even know. So that's the thing, but it's instilled in us. It's like, what it's like what we're taught like from the moment we're little because like you said we see it in movies so like our parents went through that because it's like everything is going backwards now in like the medical field you're gonna notice like 15 years from now everything's gonna be like more holistic and it's already getting there everything's everyone wants I mean, to I'm do assuming like so well, yeah because you stand the up not Western only that medicine, we're all fucking and, going like, vegan like, and right yeah so like sense. but like when my mom when we were born it wasn't like that. It was just like, you have to go to the doctor. You have to do this. You have to right. do that. Because the doctor said so. So now it's like, now as women, as doulas, as midwives, we're fighting for the rights of women to be able to have liberty again. Yeah. And have a that. say. Because it's like, like I said, who are you to tell me when I can have my baby? I know that's You right. know, like, it's like, Spe- I made this baby. When I, one thing I was curious to know, so like... A lot of men or women say, I don't want him to see it, and mm-hmm, you know, because mm-hmm. I don't want I want him to be able to fuck me again right. and shit like that. Mm. I'm not really worried about that. I'm more so worried about shitting. Can you talk about that? <sighs> shit happens. Table. But, like, you know, shitting is so normal. Can you see it? I'm, I'm actually, blood? like, actually, they clean it so fast that you can't even tell. Like, really? Those, if you're, like, having a baby at a hospital, those nurses look you out so, like, so much, they're just like... Whoosh, like taking out the like the bed pads and they're like wiping you real quick before anybody can tell. So oh, if I've wow, ever shit it, I have no idea. I don't okay. know. You know, and it's like I don't know. <laughs> like dope. Maybe who knows? Maybe shit too. It's so, not like a log. So it's just no, like it's definitely not a log. It, it'll, no, it'll I'm pretty like sure. Diarrhea, like, like once you reach that, because your body starts like. Yeah, uh, like once you start like clean, um, getting closer to your due date, your body automatically starts cleansing itself out. So you no longer have like hard shit. You have like soft poop. So, like baby shit. Yeah, pretty much. So when you give it's birth, like you if you are yourself. pushing, you most most likely you're gonna take a shit because you're pushing as if you're taking the hardest shit of your life. You're shitting out of your pussy. Right. That's what I call. So they the tell you like push as if you have to poop. A pussy shit. And so, of course, you have to push like you got to poop. So two something things I want to talk about before we close out. Right. Placenta. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you post- eat it? I heard people and eat postpartum I want to discuss. Right? People do eat their placenta. Um, well, actually, for what? I was listening to Jesus and Marrow, and he's like, I want to see how white adjacent your family is. What did you guys do with the placenta? <laughs> And what it's do so people true. do with it? As, but make see, it pills. They eat make it. it. They make it. They, people eat it. People. Um, I can't remember the hair product, but there was a hair product that got discontinued because people found out they were putting putting placenta placentas inside of it. Inside. I, I mean, mine. just think about it. It's I like God, it we're the only yet. mammals that don't eat our placentas. I'm 100 really? percent eating that shit. 
Like, listen, I'm I haven't with my last two because I wasn't as educated, but you I'm definitely it gonna time? do it this time. The nutrients because you, go ahead. Sorry. I mean, it's kind of like for me, it's like kind of hypocrit- hypocritical because I'm actually training to become a placenta encapsulator. So it's just uh, like uh, so. Let's talk so, about what is a placenta. A placenta is basically. Hold on, I have it yes, right here. Yes, yes, notes. I got it. You know what? It's not like I didn't. I, um, I knew she would knew what it was, but I wanted to make sure we were just articulate enough to like explain it the whole way through. Right. Yeah. So basically, like your placenta is like the organ that develops on the wall of your uterus during pregnancy and provides nutrients, blood, and oxygen to the baby while also okay. removing the waste from the mother. So it's kind of like the filter. Okay. So it like filters all the nasty shit from like getting to the baby. So it's like an intestine almost. It's, like you, it, everything. It's actually is. like an organ. Like when you deliver your you deliver your Comes baby. Out too. That, like, is the third step of labor. You have to deliver your placenta. Oh. And it's literally, like, the size of, like, a paper plate. And you just huh. eat it that, and that big? Please go back to this. I'm going to tell you guys about when I saw a placenta. <laughs> I went to see one of my friends. Um, let me tell you who it was. You know who it was. Look at me. I know who it was. What, oh. I told you the story? Mm-hmm. She is a baby. I go see her. Mm-hmm. I'm wearing shorts. We're in Florida. Uh-huh. <laughs> she keeps talking about this pain in her stomach. Oh, and I'm like, are you okay? And I'm like touching her. And I'm like, I take her in my hand and I rub her stomach. I'm close to the edge of the bed. It sounds like a water bucket fell out onto mm-hmm. the floor. Mm-hmm. And it happened to you? It just yeah. splashed out. My nigga. Mm-hmm. What? On my no, legs. Just yeah. Out. So wait, so it didn't come out in the hospital? No, no, no. It comes out in the hospital. Right. You like if you're at the hospital, but if you're at home, that it, it delivers just it. Slipped out. It just it slipped, slipped yeah. out. Well, yeah. bitch, it slipped right out onto my god. I remember exactly the shoes I was wearing. They were Converse low tops. And were I, they white? No. I, I, I threw them out. I would have barfed. When it, when it happened, she, but wait, she was how, so high in the epidural stage. How long after delivery did she have that? Man, maybe, this was maybe an hour. Oh, wow. They were nice because a lot of, doc, a lot of like... Um, doctors, they like push down on your stomach until it comes out. Well, I fucking didn't realize that it. it no, the, the nurse comes in because uh-huh. I start screaming. <laughs> I would have screamed. There was a little bit of blood. <gasps> you were like, what Ooh. the fuck? Right, so I scream. The nurse comes in, and I remember her face, and she's like, oh, oh my god. <laughs> and then she goes and tells me to put the gown on, and I'm like, to like Too get out my clothes. <laughs> And I'm like, what am I going to drive in? That's the first thing I said. What am I going to drive? How am I going to drive? That's so gross. Bro, it was so gross. Yeah. But, like, it sounded like a splash. So, right. okay. So, Curious to know. You said that it's, like, where we're dispensing all the bad stuff. Right. So and why do we eat it? And it's basically, like, the reason why you eat it. All right. So, it contains a massive amount of crucial hormones. So, think about it. So Helps with postpartum. Right. Exactly. So when you when you're pregnant, your hormones are everywhere. You cry over anything. You excited over anything. You're you're super like your body super sensitive to anything. Yeah. So when you give birth, all of that is gone. Right. Ugh. So you still have like your emotions, of course, because you're still like emotional and your hormones are out of, out of whack. But you have all those good nutrients that were throughout your pregnancy was the lifeline to your baby. So when you deliver that, that's gone now. You can't just take more prenatal pills? You can. But it's how, just how, like... So you said it's the size of a plate. Can yeah. I just swallow it whole? Or no. Like, you got to cut it you with have a to knife chop and fork? It you have to, it's just kind of like... It's like as if you're cutting like beef. I like just Googled a, what your placenta steak. tastes like. And it says it sort of tastes like blood or pennies. Really ironish, but you get used to it. Right. Oh, like when you I it tastes my, like... That's bleeding. I ate my placenta right. placenta right. raw so, and multiple smoothies. Mm-hmm. Some the way it, the way it is, a lot of people do it just so we can cover it. So the way it's basically done, a lot of people do it for religious beliefs. Okay, like it's like I've their tradition. That. It's like part of their religion. They do it for religious reasons. Fuck Jesus. Some women I'm trying to get healthy, bro. Some women do it for health, and it's okay. just like a lot of women say that it helped them. Like they had um, postpartum depression in previous pregnancies, and this time around they didn't have postpartum depression so do they like would they put it in a freezer bag for you they, like how well, does that work when, when you want to leave you the hospital want it, with it if you want to leave with the hospital you sign a consent form like saying like hey I'm taking my organ a consent form for your own organ wow that's a whole different topic and then you just have to be prepared like you have to come in with like um, they ask you to come in with a cooler so you can put ice and then put it in a ziploc bag and then you leave the hospital and you do whatever you want with it. White people are a trip. I put so, my placenta in smoothies with a lot of frozen strawberries yeah. and organic OJ. You right. don't even notice it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro. So, I just know that was her voice. It's just like, so basically what you do is is you have to cook it. 
So you boil it and you like steam it to like as much, like get rid of all that blood. This sounds gross. And then you can dehydrate it and that's how they turn into the capsules. <laughs> Right? Y'all some carnivores. Yo, now, okay. if you don't do the capsules, all like, you have to do is just dehydrate it, chop it up, put it in a freezer, and then every day you just throw it in your smoothie. So most women are, what's what's um the guy who was eating people? Car- oh, um, um, Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal. No, no, wait, what's the word? It is Hannibal, right? A cannibal. A cannibal. cannibal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said carnivore. Hannibal the cannibal. Yeah. Can- well, right, his close. name was we Car- Hannibal Lecter, right? We don't have time for But before we end... I want to talk about postpartum depression because right. like it's very important. That shit is fucking rough, my nigga. Yes, it really is. You yes. had it? Yes. I definitely. She said yes. Yes. Did you ever have it? I never had it. Um, Cause our periods is lit. Can you come because, here for a second? Sorry. What's yeah. your name? Alize. 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 Oh look! Just come really quick. Wait here because she's laying. Alize. Just have a seat where I'm sitting. Because she and just kind of tell, like, tell, tell us them, how it felt. Yeah, tell us about your postpartum. She was never diagnosed, though. No. Y'all, let's, welcome let's Alize onto the Horrible hey, Sex Alize. Podcast. So explain to us your postpartum, I guess, depression, what it felt like, what you went through, and kind of, you know, tell people. I felt, like, really, like, dark and, like, alone. Everything was, like, an attitude, angry. I was always, like, I wanted to be by myself. I, want, I actually lived with... Her. And she was bad. I, I yeah. hated her. Yeah, like I locked myself and the baby in the room. Like and I didn't it, want anyone to knock yeah. on the door. Like it was just. Like was I say lot. this all the time. Like she went in there with my niece, and my niece came out like three months old. Like because, yes. and I knew it, and I knew that she had the signs, and I knew it was gonna happen because I know her as a person. Mm-hmm. You know, like How she do you was get going over that. If, if you're doing, it takes your, time, oh, and, that's and, it. and it's that's just like only time. Is? I mean, you can go to the doctor, and they'll prescribe you like you know medication, yeah, but and no like want to do that. Right, right. I mean, intense. what helped you? Yeah. Um, me getting a job, like getting like after, Out the house. yeah, mm-hmm. like working and and hers. Did you ever want to hurt the baby? No, definitely not. No. They say that that happens. Some no, for some, some women, women, like I've had clients that are just like, get that baby Fuck away from baby. me, you yeah. know. And it's and it's sad because it's not. I know they don't mean it intentionally, you mm-hmm. know. It's just like, it's just your mind. Your mind plays tricks on you. And like, when you go into a pregnancy, like I tell everyone, it's always mind over matter. Right. Like you have to make sure that you're in control of your mind because your mind will play tricks on you. Now, when you're pregnant, do you <clears throat> not see a psychologist? Is that not a part of going to? You your can. doctor's visit? Yeah, you can. No, it's not. It's oh, not something. It's, it's not. not a requirement. I didn't no, even no, no. know that. No, it's definitely not a requirement. Like even b- because to me, a pregnancy is a surgery in the right. sense. And so before I had my surgery, I did have to do a psych eval right. to make sure that it was something that I wouldn't I could say handle. it's a surgery. I would say it's like a life changing moment. So because if you say surgery, all automatically people are going to be like, oh, a C-section. But no, that's not the case. It's okay. something that's going to change your life drastically because, OK, fine. I've had two babies, right. but there's no way that I can tell if this baby's going to change my life in a whole different drastic way. Mm. You know, so it's like each time a woman goes to have a baby, it's a sacred moment. Mm. So back to like what she was saying about men, how men should be there and why they should be there. It's definitely because, OK, Oh, well, she's been pregnant before. She's my baby mama. You know, like, we have kids together. But it's a mental thing. And it's just, like, our bodies go through so many changes that it's, like, even... I have a great marriage, but sometimes I'm just like, who are you texting? Huh? Why are you texting her? And he's just like, yo, calm down. What's wrong with you? Who are, who am I texting? <laughs> like, what right. are you talking about? And it's just because your mind plays tricks on you. And it's like, mm. if you don't have full control of that mind, you it can end bad. Mm-hmm. And that no, is good to know. That like, is she's hard. like, we- Weezy, bring your ass back over here, girl. Come get your seat. And home. that is hard. And well, for thank her, you so it's much a- for sharing uh, that. And for her, and she I said, would but say, she wanted to, to fight you, girl. Yeah, she did. I did. No, it's not a joke. We <laughs> really. So, so for the men, <laughs> the baby, bitch. For, I guess for the men <laughs> listening, for the sisters of pregnant women, for the friends of pregnant women, or women who just gave birth, to know that. After giving birth, there is a high chance, and right. I, I, even when and I came so on, so much said, help yeah. out there. My there's mom so said much. for three days she thought she was gonna kill me. No, for my son, I didn't have postpartum depression, but I did have baby blues. Like it was just like I felt like I wasn't enough for him. Like everything, like it was Aww. just like wow, you know, like my breastfeeding. I'm just like oh, I'm not feeding him enough. If he wasn't like pooping enough, I'm like fuck, man, I suck as a mother. That's right. You have to fucking keep and, a log of right. Bottles. It's hard. Oh, shit. A it's burp. like a lot of pressure, and that's why. And yeah, and you have to keep. Logs and that's for this? why 
it comes back to uh, even if you feel like you can't afford a doula, there's free doulas. There's so many different programs in our oh, area wow. that good if, for those even good if there's like good. there's if you like qualify for like um, WIC, um, Medicaid, oh, so they're paid by the government, right? But it's free for you. But it's free for you. Wow. So it's that's just dope. like that's really dope. Don't feel as if you can't afford it because I'm broke just as much as everybody else is broke. You know? Me too. And it's we just are like, broke. Yeah. And I receive WIC, and if I can afford, if I can go and like get a free doula. I would, you know, right. because it's just so important. And it's just like not only white people deserve a doula. And that's right. what a Latinas, lot of people think. African Americans. No, it's say just that. like <laughs> No, it's, say that. it's the truth because it's like it makes me sad because mostly all my clients are white. Mm. And it's because and is it like we, can't a luxury? Afford, we don't know. Well, For us it's know. a luxury, you know, it it's is, just right. like pop that baby out, you'll be fine. But then you have postpartum depression and we scoop it under the rug like, oh, nope, get over it. You got to figure it out. You got to go to work. You got to find a babysitter. Say that so shit, then, sis. And then what? Oh. So then we're fucked because it's just like, oh, you're just another crazy bitch. Like, yeah, keep right. it moving. I know we skipped the whole so, meal, you guys, but like, I feel like this was such no, a... I really like To be very honest with you... Um, like talk to you on the phone. You were so quiet. I thought this was gonna be trash. <laughs> right. No, oh, thank listen. You. And she knew like, not to warn me because I'd be like, "Do we? we don't don't bring her in." I was we're like, not so we gotta do nervous. screening, bitch." I'm like, well, "No, I called her and she 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 had energy on the phone." You know, when she, you called me, I was like, I was in my mom's house and we have this fucking game. Like, we have to take one car out, put another car in the driveway, and like, so to when New York. you were calling me, I was just like, <laughs> "Fuck, okay, hello, hold on, hold on," and I'm like, "Well, I wanted to make sure waddling down the fucking." Whenever someone, this is gonna sound really fucked up. After Sugar Daddy and after, after I don't know, the last um, HIV, the first HIV Ooh. episode we had, just kind of getting him to open up, and I don't think he was willing to have and that's, all the conversations. I didn't want it to be like just me. Him. Like no, I I know he he wrote us, and so he said he was willing to open it. Oh I don't yeah think yeah we did that. right. So like whenever I can't find videos or I can't mm-hmm. click on someone and hear their voice. Yeah. Which by the way with Sugar Daddy that was a trap. Yeah. <laughs> because he made videos. It was. Video. It was. It was. He, he, I saw his energy in videos. Okay. Yep. So when, um, if I can't see that I'm mm-hmm. like well let me just call in here and then once you said you had two kids and you were pregnant I was like well if she sucks we'll at least ask her about them <laughs> shits. <laughs> no. I was like oh my god what am I going to say and I, I was working you, on my you notes. You even sat down nervous and it's just like I was you so just nervous. Us, but what? I'm so, I'm see so this nervous. wasn't as hard as you no, thought right? It wasn't. Honestly it's it great flew very have. nicely. Yes. But if we if we have a minute, I actually want to talk about something because sure. um we don't know. Like I we what I want what I want every woman to know basically, every woman like myself, African American, Hispanic, we got options. Mm. We're not alone. Say that. <laughs> um don't feel like just because you can't afford something that you don't deserve it. Do you know any um, resources or anything that maybe someone I do. could look up? Yeah. Um, there's so many resources. Like, I'm from New Jersey. So, in New Jersey, we have, um, it's a program called, am I allowed to, like... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Hold on, it's and You allow. Okay. <laughs> Shit, I mean, honestly, you know, you being here is going to, I'm sure we're going to have all the girls write us like, I wish I heard this before. I wish I knew Yeah, more. absolutely. And that's the thing that it's just While like... While you're looking for that, tell them where to my, find you. Oh, yes. You guys can find me on Instagram. I am Michelle underscore the lovely doula or that's my personal or you can go to my business page. It's uh, the lovely doula. Hold on. Let me double check. Sorry about that. <laughs> doula is spelled D-O-U-L-A. OK, we're going right. to um, put her information in the description. So it's so. Um, lovely lives doula. OK. On my IG. And it's just how it's pronounced. Do you have lovely a doula lives. email? Um, yes, I do. It's uh, lovely lives ds dog sam at gmail dot com. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to don't say that, bitch. Cause no, no honestly, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> that's fine because honestly, I would rather just. Help as many women as I can. Come on, I love it. And you're, you're in the New Jersey because area, but I'm do you the, come over to yes, New York I do. as well? I do. Okay, great. Um, so oh, the basically resources, the I'm resources. Sorry. So basically the resources that I would say for New Jersey is just, um, it's called. Fuck, I can't find it right now. We can include it too. Yeah, yeah. We'll put I'll it definitely in the, in the description. Send it to you, but and we'll I definitely have it. Let me post see it. Um, any of the other information oh, okay. that we find on Patreon. So it's um, it's called NNJ Doula Net. So basically what they offer is like, you know, a program that um, 
offers services to women that are low income. Okay. Nice. So with that program, um, they just reach out to different doulas like, hey, um, are you willing to help? you know, different women that cannot really afford to pay for a doula and you just decide. It's usually mostly like women that that. are just starting up. Um, So if you, it's like different payments. Like if you um, receive like Medicaid, you might only have to pay a hundred dollars, let's whatever, say, yeah. right? And then um, if you receive Medicaid, WIC, and whatever other program that you can think of, it might be free. Okay. So like it's kind of up to the doula if you want to, you know, do it or not. I don't charge no more than three seventy five, but that's my personal preference. Right. Only because it's just like my mom's been there, and imagine if my mom would have known about a doula. No, you tax know? these rich people though. Oh, of course. But- <laughs> I, I think that's awesome. Though. I do so, like that. I, yeah. I'm really glad so that you were able to come on and share this Don't feel, like yeah. I said, like don't feel like you don't have options because there's options for everything. Yeah. Especially in Especially the, with today's technology. Was, yep. You was, can find, the, even if it's like there's some doulas that offer yeah. pro bono. And even if you're just that one lucky person that they hear your story and you're just like, you know what? I'm not charging you because yeah. that's some deep shit and you deserve right. to have somebody there for you, you know? You, you don't know Shit, the other mamas, people's I was these, about to say, especially yeah. in this day and age. We be pushing out to have horrible of, decisions, and we don't support you in the end. Right. <laughs> no, a lot of and people, And it's just yeah. like, and another thing, yeah. another thing. Support your fellow business owners, <laughs> like, especially Hello. us women. There we go. You know, like, we have to stick together if we want to build higher and you know businesses anything the simplest thing if your friend is just selling a bracelet support her because it's like she worked hard on that bracelet and if you don't support her who will yeah so it's just like the whole point of it all and the the way it's going to go in this life is like we have to stick together and even if it's just like five of you that stick together but at least you know that those five people have your back and you're going to make it up somewhere with the business owners you know before we close i go to a very elaborate gym in new york (laughs) And a lot of you probably know the name. Recently found out the person who owned it was black. And I said, yo, why are they not, like, out there and blah, 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 blah. And one of the trainers told me because he feels like if people find out it's black owned, they think it's got to be cheaper. Mm. The gym is, like, up there, popular, French, trust me. And when I heard that, I was like, yo, I get it. Yeah. And that's sad. Because because then it's just like, oh, (laughs) so black owned is like, like, y'all are up and coming? No. That's, that's sad. Well, because I'm glad it's, it's like that, that people with are going to be able to find you. Yeah, me too. This I'm was so a glad great for episode. You. This Thank was, you guys for this having was dope. me. And, and fellas, support those women in your life that are pregnant. Yes. Your co-workers, open the door. And don't be afraid to have sex with them. Don't be afraid because <laughs> honestly, said, Fuck me. there's some men that are scared to touch their women. But my philosophy is one orgasm a day keeps that Pitocin away. And Pitocin yes. is just like... A crazy medication that causes you to have crazy contractions and that shit hurts. So okay, so or that's so, right. orgasm do help with or right. orgasm a day keeps so, the away. Thank you. You Michelle. definitely want to have. We're gonna so put much. her info thank so you guys, guys can hit her up and me. ask thank your baby you. gross questions. Uh, I'm gonna look up baby coming out of the toilet. Um, please enjoy this clip from our Patreon. By the way, do want to say something about our Patreon? Um, I started a post like a month ago, maybe, of like people to meet up. A lot of you are going to the shows alone. You're like, oh, I don't know if I want to go alone. Jump in there, meet people together. Our Patreon is our community for yes. hosts to be hosts, men Well, they're included. already on there also like writing posts themselves. So you can actually start your own post. And people are like, hey, who wants to grab drinks after the Chicago show? Yeah. Who wants to grab drinks after this show? So people are meeting up and, and finding friendships from it. So yeah. it's really dope. That's been really dope, especially like when I, 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 there was a girl who got a job on our shit. Yeah. She was like, oh, I'm wow. looking for a job and blah, blah, blah. And somebody was like, hit and me cannabis, up. And cannabis. And was like, hit me up. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Super Black dope. too. Yeah. Right. So super dope. So if you haven't yet, you can join our Patreon for as little as $2. And if you want to be fancy ho and really want to support us, we do have a $15 tier. And at that tier, after four months, you can get merch. And this is the only way for you pussy ass hoes to get merch. So support us. We, we appreciate you guys. And once again, because of you guys, we are rocking out on this tour. So thank you guys. And looking forward to meet everyone coming to our live shows. This has been yet another episode of Horrible Decisions. Bye. Bye. Bye.